Hey up and welcome to Last Cast. You join us today at Sunrise Lakes just outside Harrogate. And what we're hoping to do is run you through how to attack these kind of pegs, looking to catch a mixed bag, mainly silvers, trying to avoid the carp. There's a lot of sort of winter leagues now where you're looking to avoid carp and it's only silverfish that count. So we're hopefully going to run you through how to attack this kind of area. Um, it's quite a deep lake, goes off to about six, seven feet. And we're going to look at using natural baits to target roach, bream, skimmers, hopefully a few crucians, maybe a few barbel and carp in amongst a few tench as well. So we're going to go through the baits now and show you what we're using. Bearing in mind that it's middle of winter at the moment, even though the temperatures are up slightly, you've still got to approach it with a bit of caution, feed light and use smaller, more natural baits rather than sort of big expanders and stuff like that. So with that in mind, we've got micro pellets and these are going to be going on a long line, mixed in with a few casters and a bit of hemp. We're going to look to fish a couple of casters, maybe a section of worm over that. On the short line, we're going to look at feeding pinkies and maggots loose over the top. That's going to be at sort of five metres, and beneath that, we're going to feed that with the ground bit that we'll show you in a second. Casters and hemp and a bit of chopped worm is going to go down the edge later. There's plenty of perch in here as well to target, and if you get a two, three pound fish out of there, you're looking to keep, you know, put a few of those together, you can get a decent weight out. So that's why we've gone for these natural baits, going to feed little and often small nuggets of ground bait, small balls of pellets and just a bit of loose feed over the top and sort of ease our way into the peg. You don't want to commit too much and put too much bait in early. So we'll now look at the ground bait that we're going to use. The mix that we've got is a bit of fish meal but mainly with silver roach. This creates a dark mix, very sticky and can hold a decent amount of feed. We've got a bit of crushed hemp in there as well and that's loaded with dead maggots, casters and a few grains of hemp. We're going to put small balls of these in again Using small balls like that, you're not going to get too carried away and put too much bait in, and it'll also break down that little bit quicker for when you're loose feeding over the top. So that should hopefully hold the fish on the bottom, and then by loose feeding over the top, you can catch the silvers like roach and skimmers at various layers and concentrate a few bigger fish on the bottom, and you can sort of judge where the peg's going from there. So we'll get these cupped in, start loose feeding, and then cup in a ball of micros on the long line and a few casters, and then we'll get started. Right, so now while we've, we've got the rigs plumbed up, we're now going to feed the peg just before we start. So first of all, we're going to get the three ground bait balls in on the short line. As you can see, I'm using a small pull, pull cup. Again, rather than using a larger one, it means that I'm less tempted to feed large amounts of bait. You can't really get carried away using a small pot, so that's a useful little tip. So we've got our far bank mark and we're just going to cup in just at the bottom of the shelf where the deepest water starts. It doesn't really get any deeper after that. So I think we'll be able to catch the fish fairly close. So with that now fed, I'm going to just put a small handful of pinkies over the top and a small handful of maggots as well. So that's the initial feed for that line. Now we're going to look at sorting out the longer line. This is sort of around the nine and a half metre mark. So because pellets are quite a, uh, a rich bait, plenty of feed in there, to start off that's all you'll really need and we're going to look to top this up progressively through the match. We're going to be looking for sort of fizzing from skimmers here. So they'll pr probably give themselves away. So we're going to just start off light and ease our way into it. So that goes in the pot, a few grains of hemp, a little bit of dead maggot, and just a few casters. So basically that holds the hook bait samples that we'll be using with the casters and the hemp and the dead maggot. Um, and that's going to basically give the fish an idea of what we're going to be presenting on the hook. But the main feed bait to hold them is the micro pellets.
So an important consideration in winter is that you want to attract fish from a large area. That's the idea behind putting loose offerings in that will fall through the water column, is it'll attract more fish to the area. Because we're not targeting a specific species like carp, we want to try and attract everything into the peg and try and then pin them down in a certain area. So loose feeding, that little bit of noise, can attract smaller fish into the area and thus more fish will follow. So now we'll have a look at the rigs we're going to use in each of the areas. We'll note now that I haven't fed the margin line just yet because I'll look to do that halfway through the session and then just ease, ease my way into that when the other lines start to dry up. By rotating lines you can keep fish coming all day in this way. So these are the rigs we're going to be using today. We've got five rigs set up to target three areas of the peg. The first one we're going to look at is the margin that we'll be fishing down to the right hand side. Because it's winter again you want to look for slightly deeper water so what we've got there is about three and a half, four foot. So with that in mind we've got a 0.4 float, this is onto 015 mainline and we'll be using a fairly heavy elastic um, just in case we do get a carp. So that's number 12, you want number 12 um, hollow. So it's su su supple enough to sort of get the roach and the perch out but if you do a carp it'll power up, power up enough to uh, you know, pull it out of any snags that it might find. So we've got a bulk and then one heavy dropper there. Um, again, you want to be bombing the bait down nice and quick in the margin and you want to make sure it's pinned down, especially in that depth of water. The hook length's 013 and we've got a size 16 camasan animal. Big pattern hook, um, ideal for worm, nice and heavy, sort of keep that bait nailed to the bottom there. The next rig we'll look at is on our long line over the pellets for using worm and cast on the hook. Again, it's not quite as heavy of a float as you might expect because I want to sort of fish the float through the water a bit. Um, we've got a 0.4 census pencil float, row 13 main line there. We've got an 011 hook length and a size 16 sort of silverfish pattern hook there. Um, quite a square bend, again ideal for castor and worm. We've got a spread bulk there, um, just a sort of a shotting pattern I like to use in that kind of depth of water. It gets the bait down nice and quick, but rather than just a bulk and a couple of droppers, has that slightly float, slower fall at the bottom of the, uh, of the water column. The elastic on that is a six to 10 hollow elastic. Again, risk of carp when you're using pellets, you don't want to use like a number five solid, because if that bottoms out, you're going to get snapped up. Now we look at the rigs that we're going to use over the short line. So we've got one that we've got set on the deck. Again, this is a deep rig, so we've got a point six this time but we've got the bulk quite far from the, the hook there and we've got a few droppers there. This is so we can watch the bait fall through the water. As you can see, it's got quite a long bristle, so we're going to be able to read the bites there. The elastics are doubled up number four, ideal for a mixed bag of fish really, good for skimmers, but again, you've got a chance of getting a carp out on it. The main lines are 11 and the hook lengths are 10 and we've got a, a small size 18 maggot pattern hook there. We'll be looking to fish double pinky or a maggot on that, perhaps a caster. The last two rigs are very similar, four and five elastic, and one's lighter than the other. Both Preston Chanties, one in a f uh, three by eight, and one in a, f I think a four by eight. Um, these we're gonna fish in the top couple of feet of water. We've got number, I think number 11 shot spaced out there down the line, nice and evenly. Size 20 hooks, 08 hook lengths and 011 main line. And that, we're looking to catch a mixed net of roach few smaller skimmers up there, possibly the odd perch. Because we're using pinkies and baits like that, you want to try and get the slowest fall, bait, fall of the bait possible. So that's why we've got floats that are set so light. So now what I'm going to do is start loose feeding that line and then start fishing, keeping an eye on all the other areas of the peg and then deciding how I'm going to rotate the lines through the day according to how the fish are feeding. So first cast of the day, we've just got a pinky on. We're just going to start loose feeding. This will give us a good idea of what's in the peg, how many small fish are present. Small roach to start with. First fish of the session. It's a better fish already, that one. Starting to get in amongst some nice rud here. It's getting a fish a cast already. 
rather than using a pinky on the hook, we've already made the decision to switch to a maggot and straight away we've got a couple of better fish. So all the while the ground bait beneath it's breaking up and we're attracting fish into the peg. Another nice rud. There's a few swirls coming up now. I've seen some proper vortices though, so there's definitely been a few decent fish. That's another good one. Another nice rud there. So what we'll do now is uh, run you through the kind of things that you need to be doing to be effective in this style of fishing. As you can see, the way I've got the stuff laid out around me in my kit is crucial as to how I can catch these smaller fish at speed and put a weight together. Behind me, you can see I've got my roller set so I don't have to break the pole down. Once I've got the fish close in, I've got space here to lift the fish from the water catch it in the hand and if it drops the keep net's right there so I can quickly unhook. Disgorger is always to hand and the fish is straight in the net. So once the process is set out like this you can really speed up the catch rate. So try not to, try to set your roller so you can lift the fish clear of the water, not have to break down as much. Make sure your bait is to hand just at the right height so it's very easy for me to throw very quickly. And then my rigs are right there if I need to change rigs dead quick. What we've done now is quickly changed, is um, earlier we changed from the lighter rig, we've now started catching fish on the heavier rig. What this has done is allowed us to catch a better stamp of fish. Rather than sort of fish about an ounce, two ounce, we're now catching fish four or five ounces, some up to sort of eight ounces a piece. It's been about an hour now and it's absolutely solid with fish on the shallow line, but it's gone a little bit quieter. So what I'm going to do is continue to feed shallow and now have a look on the ground bait line. It's had a long, you know, plenty of time to settle. So hopefully there should be a few fish down there. Um, hopefully the better fish as well, because what we've been catching is plenty of wood and roach, but a few more skimmers have been mixed in. So that gives an idea that there's potentially a few bream down there. So we'll now have a look at that line. Getting a couple more bites though. That's a, not a bad fish. Just had a few fish on the ground bait line. Getting a few of these decent stamp roach now. In a match situation, I've certainly been considering keeping on that shallow line because I was already catching a stamp of fish around that area, but a lot quicker. But it's always worth considering because, on, especially on a line such as this, you can always get the odd decent skimmer turning up, possibly even tench, crucians, pretty much anything will uh, patrol that marginal shelf just at the bottom of it. So it's worth always considering trying that line for a few minutes, even if you're not getting that many bites, because you can always pick up a good sized fish down there. Again, just keeping the loose feed going over the top, not so regularly, but you've got to keep it going in. Big fish, but I feel bad. Still a netter. Oh. That's a skimmer. Not to wait a while for that one, but. Got another skimmer. So we've just had a quick couple of looks over the pellet line and it's produced two skimmers this size in a row. It's not going too quickly, but there's a few fish there at the moment.
still getting a few more fish on the shallow line again. The thing is to just keep topping up those lines on the deck and while they're settling again, you can start catching these size fish. Make sure you keep ticking over, always putting fish in the net. Just catching them on a single bronze maggot, loose feeding pinkies over the top. That's the kind of thing you want to be doing around the middle of the day when the other fish aren't feeding and they're not really settled on the bottom. Leave them for the evening and as long as you keep ticking over catching fish like this, you can soon build a weight very quickly. So it's just at about one o'clock, so we're just about to feed the margin line now. I'm going to put in a big pot of castor, nice handful of hemp, and then I'm going to put a small pot of chopped worm down there as well to follow it up. So after about half an hour, we'll have a look at that. If there's nothing there, refeed it with a bit more chopped worm. Then after an hour or so, the fish should be there. So in the meantime, just gonna have a look over the ground bait lines and see if any fish have settled over those again. And so keep rotating your lines and working out where the best place to catch the fish is. Small fish. I'll go on the long line, I think. There's a few skimmers down there, but when they're that size, they're not really worth bothering with when I can catch similar sized rudd shallow. That's a lesson learned on that one. Let's see what's on the long line. Right, so the short line on the ground bait hasn't really produced there. Getting a few roach and small skimmers, but compared to what we were catching on uh, pinkies and maggots above it, shallow, not really worth it. So I'm going to have on a look on the long line where it already produced a couple of decent skimmers where we fed it with pellets and see if there's a few better fish there. Just got a couple of maggots and a pinky on the hook just to see what's down there. Just in, hooked into another fish over the pellet line. It's only a small fish, but we're getting bites a lot quicker there. So I'll have another couple of casts over the top of that. Try a bit of worm, I think. And then if it turns out there's still plenty of fish there, probably going to try refeeding it with another pot of micros.
So there's the hook bait, small section of worm head tipped with a pinky. It's a very good skimmer bait, especially when the water's coloured. So it's always worth varying your hook baits, even though you're feeding pellets. Lots of people tend to feed pellet and just fish pellet over the top, but you can get bites a lot quicker on live baits such as maggot and worm than you would on pellet. Another crucian. Right, so we've just put another little nugget of micros over the long line for the skimmers. We've had a couple of fish there and a few bites, but it's dried up, so now we're going to have a look down the margin. Good to start off on a couple of bronze maggots and just see what's down there. Indication straight away. Good fish. Feels like a perch. First fish down the margin there, nice perch, just within a couple of seconds of going in, just a couple of little indications. And these are the bonus fish that you're looking for down there. So after that fish, I'm going to go down there, as you would in summer, topping up after every fish, but just with a couple of Chopped dendrobinas and a couple of maggots chopped up as well. This just focuses the fish back in to the same area that they were feeding. And a perch that size can take quite a lot of bait in quite quickly, so you want to keep them fed. And if you put too much bait in, you're more likely to attract carp. So you've just got to be very wary of what you feed and the quantities. Goes again. That's good fish. Another nice perch. Getting a few of these together now. Not massive, but good sized fish. Nailed right in the top lip, that one. another one. We're into another good fish now. Feels like a good perch. Had to wait a while for that bite there. That's another crucian. Seems as the days come on a little bit these have started feeding. I had a couple on the pellet line, now one on the margin line. Nice little fish. Oh. 
So another good fish now. Feels like another perch can feel them shaking their heads. Oh, it's a small chub actually this time. Another species of fish. Could well be the uh, hemp and caster that's brought these fish in. Nice fish though. Tip that with a caster, I think. Not, not going so badly down the margin there, is it? There's another good fish now. Trying to keep them away from the snags. Another perch this time. Not as big as the first perch that we had, but still a good size. I think it could be another cruise in this one. Probably going to call this the last fish of the session starting to lose the light now which is probably about the right time most of the line seems to have dried up a bit so I think we'll call this the last fish of the day nice size roach though let's get him in the net and then we'll show you what we've caught so as you can see we've got a proper net full there anywhere from 15 to 20 pound there got a mixture of crucians got three or four of those a few nice perch in there, some good quality roach and a few skimmers as well and plenty of rud. We started off catching fish shallow on maggot and pinky, fishing short and that's where we've got the bulk of the fish there. As the days progressed and the cloud covers come on in the evening, we've started fishing over the micro pellets long and also caught plenty of decent perch and even a chub down the edge on worm. So just by rotating those lines, we've been able to keep fish coming all day and produce a proper net full on a winter's day. So we'll get them back now. So you've just seen us release our catch there. We've had a cracking day here at Sunrise Lakes. It's a great idea to have a look at these commercials, especially when the rivers are in flood and a lot of the natural venues are out of action. So hopefully you've enjoyed our video today. Hopefully you've also got some tips and extra information for next time you visit a venue like this. And if you like what you've seen today, like the video and uh, subscribe and we'll hopefully catch you on the next one.